Let's face it, life isn't easy. If you're stuck in a bad relationship, betrayed or afraid of tomorrow, financially insecure or desperate for a breakthrough, you've come to the right place. Dr. Carmen Hara is a renowned psychologist, intuitive, relationship expert, and best-selling author, and she's here to give you the miracle guidance you need. Her new call-in show, Miracle Guidance for Everyday Life, offers profound wisdom, practical advice, daily exercises, and empowering predictions, all for you. Dr. Hara's show aims to eliminate everyday problems, big and small, with topics like healing your relationships, reclaiming your power, achieving better health, dealing with loss, and so much more. Regain the joy, stability, and fulfillment you deserve to feel. Tune in to Miracle Guidance for Everyday Life with host Dr. Carmen Hara, live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern, and find the answers you've been looking for. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Miracle Guidance, the show that offers you guidance to transform your life. My name is Carmen Hara, and I'm live every Tuesday evening, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, right here on Home Time Radio with Christopher, my producer. And tonight, we'll talk about how to relax and how to recharge. Uh, no one likes to be stressed by living under pressure causes more harm than we can imagine. And according to the American Institute of Stress, um, this is the uh, cause of all human illnesses and diseases, stress. Is, um, is it true that we uh, don't give ourselves a break, especially in America? We're always running around, running late and running from, from one another and running from the problem. It's time that we stop putting our worries uh, before our well-being and start promoting peace and, 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 and start taking care of ourselves. So I'm going to take your calls because you know very well this is a calling show and we're going to talk about this topic, which is a major topic. It, it, it's something that you can see on a daily basis. So talking about stress, like I'm waking up in the morning, my printer doesn't work, the post office loses uh, uh, my envelope. Um, so one thing after the other, so aggravating, uh, you know, I've tried to use my card at the at the Publix, the card was blocked. Uh, things like this, that up to the last moment, I'm trying to charge my phone. The charger doesn't work. So I ask myself, is it Mercury retrograde? What is it? But all these insignificant things, they're putting a lot of pressure, and they don't allow you to, as I said, to relax. Because as I said, daily life is beyond stressful. Uh, between a demanding job and even a more demanding home life, it's almost like impossible to fit a bit of relaxation into your schedule. We have careers, we have kids, we have responsibilities. We, we try to tackle everything, especially in America. We've been taught that being busy, it's good. It's a good thing. Are you busy? It's a good thing. But we're always on the go, always occupied, always a step ahead. Even Christopher, when I called today, he said, oh, it's been one of those days, that one of those days. But this non-stop type of lifestyle in which we have no time for anything but our routine uh, can take a, a big toll on our well-being. So what about the importance of staying still once in a while, of healing ourselves and uh, creating that harmony within us. Now, I love this um, ecclesiastic saying, there is a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. But often we forget to gather our proverbial stones and our energies remain scattered in thousand different directions. Does it sound like you? We must take time not just to fulfill our duties, but to indulge in our desires, in our needs. We really need to do that. I know you're probably thinking this is easier said than done, 
But stress is difficult to deal with because at any given moment, we have multiple reasons to feel stress. We don't have enough money. We have a health problem. We have someone who's actually lying to us, somebody who's relying on us. We have problems at work. We might have even a legal battle. We might even go to a divorce or we might have a problem with a mortgage. God knows what. But the list can go on and on and on and on. But the big irony is stress comes from the frustration. You frustrate it. It arises from your inability to change our circumstances. Um, it's like uh, you want change, but in, 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 in it's that intense desire to transform your life. But nothing is worse than being stuck in a situation when you know there is no way out, when then frustration is taking over. And as I said, it's from inability to create that change of a circumstances. Um, we do not have to uh, uh, have control over everything, but stressing over the things we can change not only does not help the situation, but it, it does what, something that is called disempowering us over, uh, even, uh, even forever. So you don't want to be disempowered. You want to be empowered. When you stress, we become desperate. We can't think straight. And we make a lot of mistakes when we can think straight. The universe can help us react uh, uh, in the right way and can help us rectify situations that we become at the end obsessed with because under those kind of emotions, we're not recepting and we're not receiving divine guidance. So stressing over something does the opposite of what we want it to do and want it to be. It leaves us with less control. So I've noticed that one of the greatest law of the universe is this. The less you worry about it, the more likely it is to be resolved. I've seen people who worry on a daily basis, morning and night, morning and night. I'm, I'm having patient clients calling me, I'm worried, I'm worried every five second and as Lama, the more the more you worry the the less you actually have a chance of solving your problem the statistics of stress are alarming as i said all the way from the beginning of the show because according to the american institute of stress three out of four doctors visits uh, are for stress related problems Almost half of the Americans feel more stressed now than they did five years ago, ten years ago. And uh, one in five Americans also experience extreme stress. And extreme stress leads to these panic disorders, uh, 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 causing shaking, uh, palpitation, strokes, depression. Uh, I don't know about you, but I, 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 as I said, I felt my fair share of stress. I had moments in my mind when I felt the weight of the world on my shoulders. And I believe that you relate to this yourself. But, you know, thankfully, I've learned to cope with stressful uh, triggers. And I have found effective ways of calming myself down in critical moments. And tonight I decided I'm going to share with you the seven simple powerful ways to reduce stress and to boost um, to boost your serenity i did um some years ago i uh, try to remember how many years ago i think probably two three years ago a uh, guided meditation for actually for hay house as i'm a hay house author and uh, the meditation was called erasing negative imprints and this was a wonderful exercise for healing from the past and opening up your potential. So my meditation quickly reached uh, over 40, 50,000 views on YouTube. So I'm going to do it tonight and I'm going to, uh, to go through it again with you. And I want you to kind of meditate with me and follow my guidance and as my show is divided into three segments, one of the segments of the show, and I think it's probably going to be the last, 
uh, at the beginning I'm going to take your calls and at the end I'm going to do this guided meditation in which, as I said, I want you to participate. So if you want to participate in a meditation, please find a quiet place and get ready to relax. And a little bit later, we'll go to this meditation. I hope you'll enjoy it. And if you don't have time for it today, that's fine. Uh, you can uh, you can listen to it any other time because if you go to YouTube and if you uh, put a, a search on Carmen Hara guided meditation, you're going to find it. Uh, but again, this is your show, so feel free to call in. Feel free to um, talk to me if you have any questions about yourself, 202-570-7057. Um, and Christopher will take you call and will connect you with me. Um, if you want a session with me, I offer you buy one, get one free, uh, which allows you to give one of the session to one of your family members, to one of your friends, or keep it for yourself for later, or just double your time. If you want to talk to me in private, uh, then you can email me at C-A-R-M-E-N-H-A-R-R-A, Carmen Hara at AOL, C-A-R-M-E-N-H-A-R-R-A at AOL.com. You can be my friend on Facebook, Carmen Hara, on Twitter at Carmen Hara. Uh, you can be um, watching my YouTube channels. Uh, I have interesting videos. I have even my music, Carmen Hara Sings. I've been a singer since I was nine years old. And this is my passion, and this is my way to actually relax. My um, latest book is called The Karma Queen's Guide to Relationship. It's a guide to relationship. It has been published by uh, Penguin Books um, two years and a half ago. And um, it also talks about relationship and especially love relationship. And it, it, it uh, gives you um, a, a clear understanding which relationship are you in and how to create a healthy relationship, because we all deserve good relationship. And now I'm going to go to what I uh, uh, came up with, um, and I think it's, uh, it's beneficial for you to, to think about my seven ways to uh, boost the serenity, to get out of the stressful situation you are in. And I'm going to start by the number one, number one uh, key, number one way is exercise. Exercise has a positive impact on every part of your being. It increases circulation, it strengthens your heart, and it's a prime stress booster. It causes the production of feel-good neurotransmitters known as endorphin. The mental concentration, you know what I mean, required during exercise diverts your attention from stress. Uh, move in any way uh, you, you like to move, like go, go play tennis, go do running, go do yoga. You like swimming. If you like Zumba, if you like dancing, if you just simply want to walk, the most important thing that you stay active to stay stress-free. That, to me, is the number one way to get rid of your stress. Another wonderful way, you know, is music. And I want you to listen to music, and music in solitude, when you listen to the music yourself with all your heart. You retreat to a place of solitude. Find your, like, your own room, your own space, and put on your favorite song your favorite music, and be, be sure to play a song that's slow, that's soothing, that's mellow, one that really speaks to, to you, to your soul, and simply listen, listening to that kind of a, uh, sometimes classical music, you know, sometimes um, Bo Bocelli, or one of those great singers, Celine Dion, singers that make you absorb the words and allow the melody to glide over your body. So breathe in sync with the song, following the highs and the lows of the rhythm. Like participate, participate. You, all, you immediately, you, you unplug yourself from the pressure, from the stress, from the uh, negative emotion, from everything that's kind of overwhelming you. And you create... 
uh, immediately a state of calmness. And have just a special playlist just for the time of solitude and allow the music to play until you feel fully, completely recharged. Uh, and the third, the third um, way to eliminate stress is um, calming affirmation. As you know, my opinion, affirmation rewire the brain. They reprogram the mind. They're very positive. They, they are um, the art of the spoken word uh, used uh, to your advantage. Now, uh, patterns of speech form systems of belief. When you reassure yourself repeatedly uh, through positive words, you begin to believe what you affirm. And I'm going to give you um, some great affirmation to practice anytime you need to unwind because they are so powerful. As I said, there is an art of the spoken words and words have power. And I said it many, many times, you know, uh, be aware what you say, because what you say, you become. Your words are just expression of your thoughts, of your intention, of your action. And they put something in motion. So that's why affirmation are powerful. But I know I'm going to go to a break right now, and I will continue with the following steps that have something to do with um, um, undoing stress. Best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Connect at ometimes.com. Ohm Times, creating a more conscious lifestyle. Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Ohm Times Magazine's flagship radio show, What is Going On? My passion is sifting through information, research, and innovations from new thought teachers, speakers, and researchers pushing back the boundaries of what we know about life, energy, metaphysics, and the universe. I love shifting perceptions about who we are, why we're here, and how quickly impossible becomes normal when we open our minds, expand our awareness, and accept that the only limits that exist are those we place upon ourselves. So if you're the kind of forward-thinking, eager investigator of what lies beyond the current reality that most perceive, why not make a date to come play with me in the field of possibilities at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time every Thursday. And together, we can discover what's really going on. Melissa from Michigan. I work an extra part-time job serving lunch at my child's school, but I still can't afford to put food on our table. Daniel from California. Choosing whether to pay the rent or pay to fix the car to get to work doesn't leave us with much at all. Now we can't even pay for meals. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Hi, I'm back. I'm Carmen Hara. So we were talking about different ways, the seven ways of... Um, <clears throat> calming yourself and, and reducing stress and actually pretty much getting rid of stress. And I, as I was saying, one, it is um, exercising, music in solitude, calming affirmation. I'm going to give you some of the affirmation, uh, which I, I put them together and I think they will resonate with you. Um, I am in control. I am calm. I am still. I conquer my burdens. I am 
master of my challenges. I triumph over my stress and celebrate my harmony. Serenity surges through my body, my mind, and my soul. As I breathe in, my spirits swell with tranquility. So these are the things that you can say anytime, you know, you need to feel more in control. Number four, you know, in the list of seven is memories. Memories are a great way to escape a current situation and temporarily travel to a happier place. So don't be afraid to bring up that time when for a few laugh that uh, ease the, sense, the tension of the long day, recollect the most pleasant parts of your past with friends and family to distract your thoughts from present doubts. So memories, take them from many years ago. It doesn't matter. Look at pictures that uh, symbolizes great memories because you disconnect, as I said, from the moment of tension. Number five is physical contact. A simple touch can be instantly calming. When you feel overwhelmed, embrace the, a loved one and hold them tight. Feel that warm energy that melts away your anxiety. Allow your pet sometime to cuddle next to you. Rest your head on a friend's shoulder. There is no need always to talk. Just holding a warm hand says it all. It's very important that physical touch, you know, it's just transfer of energy allows you to release the stressful moment. Number six is mindful writing. Take out a pen and a paper and take a deep breath. Chances are that you are, um, that your concern are on the tip of your brain. So the, now start to write them down, you know, they will travel from the tip of your brain to, to the tip of your finger. Just try to write about your day, about your worries, about your dilemmas, about something that is upsetting you. It's a very therapeutic tool to put in writing your feelings, your frustration, as I said, your ne negative emotion. Don't type your frustration, write them by hand. Release your emotion and struggles through your words. From your body to the page, let your writing be an outlet of releasing stress. Very powerful, extremely powerful. And number seven, I want you to do your favorite hobbies. Practicing your favorite hobbies engages your mind in, in a very uh, uh, enjoyable activity, like practice a craft that you love that require your attention, such as like creating something or cooking or just a game. It is, it is usually valuable to devote time and effort to the, thing, to the things you want to do, not just to the things you have to do. So it's like do things that makes, gives you pleasure. Stress is an inevitable part of a daily life, but you can take simple steps to find relief. So that's why I want you to practice this relaxing exercises and take all four in serenity. Very, very important. What you actually do by doing this, you prolong your life. Uh, you, you make sure you're healthy. This is the way you uh, uh, release uh, uh, negativity and keep yourself uh, healthy. So it's, it's essential that you practice these things. So probably many of you are exercising uh, probably not even realizing just because it makes you feel good listening to the music just it makes you feel good but I guess just put them together I put together <clears throat> the seven ways to get rid of stress also there's something I want to tell you today on the show that next week I'm going to have one of the most uh, extraordinary astrologer I've ever met, Devra Silverman is going to be with me on the show live, and we're going to take your call. So if you have um, interest in finding out uh, astrologically what's in store for you, you just call the show with your birthday, and Debra will um, uh, take your calls and uh, will uh, answer your questions regarding your chart. And no matter the, the nature of your question, you can ask her 
and we'll be together on the show. So it's going to be um, because uh, it's gonna, because it's such a such a powerful um, astrologer. She's such a known astrologer. You're gonna have we're gonna have a lot of time uh, uh, doing it. Uh, it's it's gonna be great. So um, I want you to uh, call in next week um, uh, when uh, Christopher is gonna take your calls and we will answer your question, Deborah and and myself, but especially Deborah because um, her specialty in astrology. So it's like an astro- astrology show next next week with Deborah Silverman, my my wonderful friend. Um, and uh, also today on uh, September 11, we honor, uh, you know, all the people who lost their lives um, on September 11. And I have such a story on that day. I remember that um, living in New York, I was taking my daughter to um, uh, school. And um, when I, I was supposed to go into the city, uh, my house was in Queens. And on my way to the city, uh, my mother died uh, months before September 11. I heard her voice telling me, go back home. You're not going in the city. Something is happening in the city. And please go home. Put, 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 put the TV on. I turned the car around. I listened. And I opened the door of my house. And my husband was at the door. And he was planning to leave for his job. Uh, he used to have a store, an antique store in Jamaica Estate. And he looked at me, he said, well, you're supposed to be in the city. I said, yes, but listen, my mother told me to come home and put the TV on because something is happening in the city. And he was looking at me and he was looking in disbelief and he said, what is this craziness, Carmen? What are you talking about? And two minutes later, while he was questioning me and the TV went on, uh, we saw on TV uh, how the first airplane hit the tower and he couldn't even say a word. He was mesmerized. He sit on the chair. We were both looking in disbelief. And at that time, I was pretty uh, known in New York. So I had ABC calling me. I had Channel 11. I was live on uh, Channel 11 with uh, Lynn White, the anchor by that time. And we were talking about what's happening in the city. There was, everybody was calling me if I have any insight about, and I knew, believe it or not, I knew how many people are going to die. I knew there are four airplanes. Nobody knew at that point exactly what was going on, but some information came, like channeling the other side, I I had that information. And I will never forget that. That day to me was the most... uh, fascinating day of my life as much as was the saddest day of my life uh, to see what was happening in the city and how uh, how many people uh, uh, died and we're celebrating their memories right now but I can never forget how I turned the car around and went back home and put the TV on and sit on the chair and waiting for September 11 to happen, like I knew probably half an hour, an hour before anything happening, that thing, I was warned, I was told, I was uh, informed, it's, it's just so powerful to acknowledge that you are guided from above, that somehow, you know, your brain has this ability to transcend time, to acknowledge what's going to happen, so unfortunately, you know, we don't want events like this to happen, we want to know only beautiful things, but today we're celebrating all those people who uh, um, are not with us anymore, who sacrifice their life, many of them, you know. It's just um, such an amazing day um, of pain and sorrow and celebration for America. But now, before I go, my next segment is going to be actually on the meditation that I told you about. Uh, the last segment is going to be the guided meditation in which if you want to be with me on that guided meditation, you definitely, in the next number of minutes, uh, will start meditating together. Um, and we'll, we'll, uh, I'm not going to take your calls on that segment. In the last of this segment, I'm going to take your calls. If there's anybody here having questions for me, 
And in a minute, I'm going to go to Dominga's and see what how she's doing. But again, if you want to be with me on the last part of the show, on the segment, and if you want to meditate, just find a, find a place where you can relax, a place in which you are on your own and nobody else is with you. And we can sit and do the guided meditation together. So now I'm going to go to Domingas. Hi, my lovely Domingas, and thank you so much for patiently waiting for me to talk to you today. How are you, my love? It's a blessing. It's just like count the days to hear your voice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're so I, sweet. And, yeah, and I I went online. I, I was checking all your things i already heard your meditation it was good actually that's why i'm better now because i already heard all the meditation right right yeah it's amazing it was beautiful it's good it's good to it's good to meditate it's good to i'm gonna do it tonight together you know i'm gonna do it with the people listening uh it's good to release release all the pressure all especially you know because i know your situation dominga and you well, you know, without wanting, you allow this pressure, this fear, the uh, the sadness, the sorrow, the the pain, you know, to to take control. You allow it to happen. You don't want it, but the pain is there, and it becomes stressful, and it it, it overwhelms you, and it's it's it sort of tears your heart apart, and you don't want that to happen. So when you yeah, meditate, you release it. You release it in the universe and you create that oneness, that healing. You need to heal from the pain. I think the worst pain is the pain of your heart. I think you can cope better with the pain in your leg or in your arm or whatever, you know. When it comes to this kind of pain that has to do with your love life, those are the worst, the worst uh, uh, pain. So how's everything with you lately? And do you have anything new going on? Um, no, it's just that the communication between me and my husband feels a little bit more polished. It's almost like we are arguing. Good. He was arguing with me. Now it's more like uh, less aggressive. That's the only thing that. That's a better. very good sign. That's a very good sign. As long as it's not uh, aggressive, as long as it's not uh, um, abusive verbally, as long as it's, as you said, more polished, more civilized, much nicer, much calmer, then you can progress from slowly, slowly, you turn the wheel around, you know, from where it was into getting better and better step by step, step by step, making it better. And if you can avoid... um, uh, Bad communication, even better. If you can stick with um, uh, communicating with him uh, only when he's in a good mood and only about constructive things, then even better. So um, I totally believe that you're on the right track. And I totally believe that uh, uh, the more the time goes by, the more... He's acknowledging that there's no need of a separation. There's no need of uh, walking away from each other, if you agree with me. Many blessings. Thanks to tell me that. Because right. I hear, and yeah, you, I should see, you should stay stick with your, uh, with your decision. You should stay stick with, you know what I mean, with, with this. Uh, your mind should be uh, programmed this way. Yeah, I have no other choice because if I try to do the other, right. it, it doesn't work. I have Ab- the only absolutely, only one absolutely, choice. yeah, absolutely, yeah. And see what happens. Totally, everything. Totally has the name. Everything for happened for a reason. And I think I'm in year two, between year one and year two, and and there's a mix of good on that reconciliation. I think I read your book. So I'm right. Like, you know, I'm very you know, excited to... You have to be to truthful of... to your, to your, uh, to you, to what you want, to your decision. You have to stay uh, positive to your decision and you don't have to be um, uh, uh, moving from that decision. You don't have to be um, uh, affected by the fear of what if something goes wrong. No, you have to stick to yourself and true to your decision. Yeah, to say, this is what I want, 
yeah, this is what I want, and there's no fear attached in what I want, and I'm not going to let anything disturb this, and I'm not going to stick with this, and I am very confident that, have that confidence, I can make this happen, because it's for my own benefit, for his benefit, and everybody will actually benefit from this. So this is the way to do it. Yeah, the, yeah, I, I think you're right. I just need to let go of the fear. If it, you know. Yeah, it's kept... fear is a paralyzing thing, and fear is actually coming out of of a pressure and frustration and uh, insecurities. So no negative uh, feelings. No, ne you cannot afford to be negative. You cannot afford anything negative here. You can't afford yeah, that. That's good. Yeah, that's good. absolutely not. Practice too. I'm, I'm going to practice to do as much as I can meditation and all the things you just right. mentioned on my daily life, so that will probably go away. Exactly, exactly. If you do that, you watch and see how things are going to, you know, turn around and, and change. It, it's it's going to be magic. You have to believe in Thank the magic, you. you know. I mean, since the dawn of time, we believe in, in, in white magic, in something that has to do with the... Uh, the power of the mind, the power of thoughts, the power of the divine world. That's why we do yes. prayers. That's why we ask guidance from above, because we we believe that everything that is uh, for our own advantage, it can happen to our own benefit. So I think that why you pray and what you want is to the benefit of you and him and both of you and the family. So you just see beyond something that he doesn't see. So you have to continue to work on this. So I love you, Domingas. Thank you so much for calling. So, And you guys, don't go anywhere. I'm going to start the meditation in uh, two, three minutes. So um, hold on the line. Thank you. The best of holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free, AscendingHearts.com. Hello, I'm Lisa Berry. Join me every Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time for Light on Living. A chance to see new, hear different, and feel more as I shine the spotlight on all the ways to lighten the load of life's challenges. Light on Living is your link to that new way you're looking for, that new understanding that will enhance your life, and that positive connection that will support your growth. So join me and you'll gain insight and start to see things in a new way that motivates you. I'm Fidel Nshombo. I was born in a city called the Bukavu in the Congo. We were a loving family and then boom, everything that I had disappeared in a single day. People think that when you are a refugee and they resettle you to America and all your problems are done. They don't understand that that's the beginning of everything. I was not born a refugee. I was made one. It's time we welcome refugee families with open arms. Learn more at EmbraceRefugees.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Um, on Home Time Radio uh, with Christopher. And I have another call, Lucia, which I'm going to take from Louisiana. Hi, my lovely Lucia. How are you, my dear? Hello, Hello, Lucia, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear? I can hear you perfectly. I can hear you. Hi, okay, my dear. Okay, How can I help you, my my yes. Lucia? How are you, my love? Currently, I work in real estate, but it seems that everything okay. I touch just dies. So I wanted to know, is the universe trying to tell me to go in a different direction? When you say everything, everything is, uh, has a very heavy connotation. It refers to many things in your life. Are you, are you sort of uh, um, pointing more towards work when you said um, not, yes, not, uh, 
career wise. So it's not quite everything. It's just career. Okay. No, yeah, I so every, everything in real estate that I try. Dies. Or everything in real estate, yeah. Yeah. Um, so so is it happening in like in the last two years? Yes. Okay. Uh, do you mind telling me the month and the day of your birth, not the year? 8-27, August 27. August 27. Let me see why, because... There are years in our life when things are not working. 27. Actually, things were not working in the last two years. They might turn around as of um, quite right now because it was your birthday, happy birthday, it just, just happened recently. I feel like you might see a major... Th- so what happened? You're in the year nine, that last year. Last year, meaning from end of August 2017 all the way down to end of August 2018, nothing was working at all. You're right. Not even prior to that because you're in a difficult karmic year. So when I said the last two years, but you're starting a new life cycle as of right now as we speak. In this very moment, you just entered the new year all the way down to September of 2019. This this is a year of golden opportunities that might open open to you out of the blue, including the business of real estate. But there might be some other opportunities coming your way. So I should say, uh, uh, don't give up yet. Uh, let the let, let it let it flow and and uh, and allow it to see if this is really. The energy of the year one, which is the beginning of a new life cycle, then let it be, you know, and don't do anything. I will not walk away from it, but I will pay attention. There might be another business with the help of a woman, who well, I think has an M name. So there's somebody else that comes in your life who will be very instrumental and very helpful uh, to um, to create um something else for you you understand what i mean there might be a different type of business there might be something that is more creative a real estate is less degree of creativity is more black and white it's a buy and sell thing it's something in which i feel like your creativity might be involved you are lucky with money i can tell you that and you have a very long life you're very healthy very dynamic um, and I think you should allow this other opportunity to come your way. This woman is a woman around your age. She might be one or two years younger. She has a daughter. Um, I can tell she's medium in height. I have a sense of her. So when I say you go the new, in the new direction with the help of this person, she might be involving you in, in a business that she has an idea and you might have an idea, but it's more something creative. So you're not going to limit yourself to the real estate, but you will open doors to, to something else. So that, that's what um, sort of excites me when it comes to your, to your work in the very, very near future. Now, remember, the beginning of a life cycle, all these doors open and all these opportunities are presented. So I'm pretty excited that um, something that I'm... I'm, I'm giving you an idea will start to manifest as we speak and call me call me like in two three weeks in a month and let me know if you have an idea what i'm telling you if you feel like this real estate business is picking up will you of course i will yeah thank you so much it makes a lot of sense it makes sense yes so we're not giving up on anything we're just allowing ourselves to acknowledge that the time finally plays in our favor, uh, which means also this business and, and also something else that in you will know much more. There's also an initial with a G, George, uh, J, G, J, sound of a name that also comes very, very strong in my head. So let's see how all this information will unfold. And as I said, I'm looking forward to talk to you again, Lucia. Okay, my love. Thank you, Thank so, you much so much for listening Carmen. to my show. Thank you, my love. Okay, and now for everybody listening, <laughs> let's try to do a little bit of 
of guided meditation. And as I said, I want you to relax. Find yourself a place where you're comfortable. You want to relax. And try, try to stay in a pyramid position. Like if possible, sit on a, on a, on a floor or on a bed and cross your legs in the Indian style and keep your back straight and, 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 and uh, gently rest the back of your hands on the inner parts of your knees. So touch your middle finger to your thumb. So keep your palms uh, forward and facing upward. So make sure that you're in a quiet environment where no one will interrupt you because this might take uh, some minutes. So I, I try to make it as short as possible, but I want you to be in a place where nobody is interrupting you. And now let's close your eyes and follow my voice. Breathe in slowly, deeply, and exhale. And keep breathing. You are now ready to journey into your inner self and explore the hidden realm of your mind. Relax all your muscle in your face and body. Unlock your jaw, drop your shoulder, lighten the tension in your core. Pay attention only to my voice. Everything else is fading away, getting more and more distant. I'm the only thing you hear. You have closed off the physical world. You are in complete solitude. Now breathe in deeply, softly, powerfully. Count to five as you breathe. One two, three, four, five. Hold your breath. One, two, three, four, five. And breathe out. One, two, three, four, five. Every fiber of your being is nourished by air. Your mind is beyond the physical plane. You are in the invisible world. Here you can do anything you want. Into the vortex of divine energy, you are elevated higher and higher into a new realm of existence. Your mind is absorbing this new reality and nothing is impossible here. Keep breathing. Feel the fresh air as it fills your lungs. Feel the tip of your fingers tingling with new energy. Feel your senses transmitting energy through your body. Everything within you is vibrating with life. You are whiteless. You are light as a feather. You are as powerful as a mountain. Gravity does not hold you down. You are flying in the air. You look down on the world from above. You are free. Feel the air rushing past you. Feel your heart beating inside your chest. Feel the blood flowing throughout your warm body. You are allowed. You are alive. You are thriving. You are part of spirit. You are there where you belong, where your soul belongs. Breathe in. One two, three, four, five. Keep your breath. One, two, three, four, five. And now breathe out. One, two, three, four, five. Listen to the language of your breath. Concentrate on the stillness of your mind. No thoughts, no hurt, no pain, no worries. No bad memories. Now there is a door in front of you, surrounded by white light. Open that door. You enter a room full of your memories. Every memory you've ever had is contained in that room. 
You go to your first memory. What is it? What do you feel as this memory comes to your mind? What emotion are you experiencing? Are you happy? Are you afraid? Are you sad? Are you taking back to your childhood? Back to the first moment of life that you recall. You are an observer watching from the outside, watching a movie of yourself playing before your eyes. This memory will tell you everything you need to know. Study that memory, play it over and over in your mind and you are relaxed and you are focused on this memory. Let this first memory continue to show in your mind. Absorb it in your being. The universe wants to help you to heal all of your pain. Now think of something that is bothering you in this moment. Observe how your mind brings the issue to the surface. What is the cause of your stress? Stay focused on the problem. Ask spirit for help. Allow its warmth to comfort you. Let it quiet your concern. Spirit is flowing through you. Spirit is filling your being with each breath. A white bright energy is radiating from your body. A divine substance is entering every cell. You feel this intense energy coming from above to nourish you. The sounds are mending. You are healing. Allow the infinite knowledge to enter your mind, the infinite wisdom of the universe to enter your heart. Feel your chest as it gets warmer. Your mind as it gets clearer. Spirit is circulating through your entire being and now is speaking. What is the spirit telling you? What is it showing you? Is it showing the resolution to your problem? Can you hear a small voice trying to guide you? You are on the right path to becoming your highest self. A river flows through your body. It cleans away everything. See how beautiful you are. See the blue sky above you. See the world around you. Be happy. You are free. You are flying. Your problems are resolved. Now you are powerful enough to break through your blockages. Send the bad energy where it belongs. You are no longer blocked by fear. You are no longer stuck. You are no longer locked in unresolved issues. As I count to ten, you let go the ten blockages I described to you. Imagine you are holding ten rocks in your hands. They are weighing you down. They make you feel heavy. You want to get rid of them. You will throw them as far as you can away from you. Throw them back into the universe. You will get rid of these rocks, these burdens. You will feel free, light, pure. Take a moment to think about how this applies to you. Envision your own resolution. Let your uh, breath, breath deep in sink into your chest and continue to center your spirit. Align with the divine. Remain in the pyramid position a little bit longer. Because you are more powerful than ever. And you should say, fear, you will never be in my life. The divine is wrapping you in protection. You belong to God. You are part of God. Throw the first rock away from you. You will never be disappointed. The people in your life love you and make you proud. Throw the second rock away from you. Fear, you will never hurt me again. Your life will be spent in laughter and joy. You will have so many reasons to smile every day. Throw the third rock away. You will never lack what you need. Your life will be full of abundance and prosperity. Imagine yourself having everything you desire. Throw the four rock away. You will never be betrayed. You will always be loved. Your relationships are loyal. 
the people in your life are honest and respectful. Throw the fifth rock away. You will never be alone. You will always be in good company. See yourself surrounded by a group of good people. Throw the sixth rock away. You will never experience imbalance. Your mind, your soul will cooperate in perfect harmony. Throw the seventh rock away. You will never fail in your career. You will fulfill your mission. You will do what you love the most. And throw the ninth rock away. Feel the love in your heart. Multiply. Your partner will show you endless love. Throw the ninth rock away. The tenth rock away. You will never be sick. Your body is completely aligned. You have now been unlocked from the ten fears. And now you are free. Now you can fly. The cosmic energy enters you so easily. And now breathe. One, two, three, four, five. Keep your breath. One, two, three, four, five. Breathe out. One, two, three, four, five. And this has been my meditation. I love you guys. I'm Carmen Hara. And I will be with you next week on Home Time Radio. Thank you for listening.